The four sections, you can see them up on the screen now. All right, we got purgatory, limbo of the fathers, limbo of the children, and Gehenna. All right, so that's the architecture so far of Hades. Now, what happened on Holy Saturday? The harrowing of hell. Harrowing is like the harvest. Christ comes as victor over hell. He does not suffer in the fires of hell. He comes in procession with his angels to be a victor. That's why I like this picture so much. It kind of shows Christ in his light coming down into the darkness of the abode of hell and saying, I have finally paid the price for you, Adam and Eve. That's what this icon here is all about. It's Christ having descended into hell under his feet are the gates of hell, which have been broken down by him. And on his right hand, he has Adam. And on his left hand, he has Eve. And he's pulling them up out of hell and saying, hey, let's get out of here. Let's go to heaven. When Christ descends into hell, into Hades, or we might say more accurately, he descends into the limbo of the fathers. He comes as a victor and he's been it's, the way has been prepared for him. By whom, you might ask? All the Old Testament prophets that prophesied of Christ are saying, hey, he's getting close, he's getting close. When Joseph the patriarch died, he went to limbo of the fathers. And he said, the Messiah is coming. When John the Baptist had his head cut off, just as he had prepared the way on earth, he went down into limbo and he prepared all the people. The Old Testament said, he's coming, I'm telling you. I'm here to preach the coming of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is at hand. And when Christ on the cross said, consumatum est, it is finished. And he gave up the ghost and he died. His soul entered into this underworld, into the limbo of the Father. This is an apocryphal work, so it's not scripture. It's not the Bible. It comes from the 400s. So it's early, you know, it's church father's material. But again, this is not infallible, and I don't want you to take this as gospel. But this is sort of a, um, a historical fiction recounting, written by someone. It's called the Gospel of Nicodemus. It's not technically heretical, but it gives a sort of like a film version, a, a cinematic account of what it must have been like for all the Old Testament saints to be waiting in limbo, and then suddenly there's this, this apparition of light, and Christ appears to them. So all the prophets are discussing the coming of Christ, and John the Baptist discusses the coming of Christ, and then suddenly they are aware that he is about to arrive. Okay, while Satan and Hades were thus speaking, there was a great voice like thunder saying, Lift up your gates, O you rulers, and be ye lifted up, you everlasting gates, and the king of glory shall come in. This, is, by the way, is a quote from the Psalms. When hell heard this, he said to Satan, Go forth if you are able and withstand him. Satan therefore went forth to the outside. Then hell says to the demons, Secure well, and strongly the gates of brass and the bars of iron and attend to my bolts and stand in order to see to everything. For if he comes in here, woe will seize us. And the forefathers, having heard this, began all to revile him, saying, All devouring, insatiable, open, that the king of glory may come in. Who is this king of glory? And the angels say, The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. And immediately with these words, the brazen gates were shattered. And the iron bars broke, and all the dead who had been bound came out of their prisons, and we with them. And the king of glory came in the form of a man, and all the dark places of Hades were lightened up. Immediately hell cried out, We have been conquered, woe is us! But who are you that you have so much power and might? And what are you who comest here without sin, who art seen to be small? and yet of great power, lowly and yet exalted, a slave and yet a master, the soldier and yet a king, and who has power over the dead and the living. You were nailed on the cross and placed in the tomb, and now you are free and have destroyed all our power. 
And you then, the Jesus about whom the chief satrap Satan told us that through cross and death, you are to inherit the whole world. Then the king of glory, Jesus, seized the chief satrap Satan by the head and delivered him to his angels and said, with iron chains, bind his hands and feet and his neck and his mouth. And he delivered him to hell and said, take him and keep him secure until my second coming. My favorite part is when hell itself laments that hell is defeated. And he says, and what are you who comest here without sin, who are seem to be small and yet have great power, lowly and yet exalted, a slave and yet the master, the soldier and yet the king, and who has power over the dead and the living. Christ made himself into a servant. He who is God, God the Son, equal to the Father, equal to the Holy Ghost, made himself small in the womb of the Virgin Mary. He was obedient to death on the cross. He gave himself as a complete sacrifice and oblation to the honor of God the Father for our redemption. And by that humility, by that passion, he not only saves us, but brings all the glory of God, all the glory of God into this world, creates saints, which is why we say the litany of the saints. Yes, Lord.